When the program began, there were very few blacks in aviation, including Charles Anderson and so forth, Bessie Coleman and so forth. I can tell you more about that later. But um, growing up in New York, a couple of things that are important and interesting. I never had a black teacher in all my life, from kindergarten to graduate school. In New York, it was a I, it wasn't it wasn't integrated, but it wasn't nearly as the discrimination was not nearly as harsh as it was in this part of the country, and so therefore uh, uh, that part of my education about blacks in this country was void until I came south. So all the aviators that I knew about were Lindbergh, Amelia Earhart, and Roscoe Turner. Mm -hmm. um, the only heroes I had, blacks, were Marin Anderson, Joe Lewis, and, and Jesse Owens. And that's the only ones I know about. Well, um, people in my neighborhood in the Bronx, where I moved when I was a teenager, they used to wonder about this crazy kid who dreams of flying when everybody knows black folks are not flying this country, commercially or otherwise. But it was, a, it was a dream with which I was born. My mother told me when I was an infant before I could talk, I would throw a piece of paper there and try to say airplane, airplane. <laughs> and so I was born with that dream and I pursued it through my teenage years building model airplanes and at City College where I uh, enrolled after I finished Stuyvesant High School. Um, <clears throat> pardon me, there was a program which the federal government had begun called the Civilian Pilot Training Program. Mm -hmm. And uh, it had been in a number of colleges throughout the United States, including six black colleges, uh, Howard, Lincoln, Tuskegee, West Virginia State, Maryland State, and one more, I can't remember at the moment. Well, when I was able to enroll in that program, it moved me a step toward my, my dream of becoming a pilot. Um, and that sort of opened up my hopes that someday maybe I could be able to do this. Well, I mentioned, uh, I think I mentioned, the War, Army War College study of 1925. When I talk to a group, I usually quote from uh, uh, a doctoral study by an Air Force Air Force officer, uh, Alan Osher, who wrote a book called, pardon me, <coughs> um, Blacks in the World War in the in the uh, on the Air Force during World War Two, mm -hmm. and uh, in that study, the he, uh, there's a quotation indicating that the Army War College faculty and students came to some very ridiculous conclusions. And the bottom line, and it's, it's in the study itself. State is that Negroes are subspecies of the human family. So we're not even human. So we couldn't be expected to do anything technical like fly an airplane or as ground crew maintaining airplanes to fly and so forth. And that was the general attitude in the public at large, the Congress, representatives and senators, and uh, the military. That was the general idea. So once the opportunity to start flying for a program which eventually would lead to a military commission, a military pilot, once that was started, we were determined. And I, I never sat down with the guys, and, and we had a conference, but it, just, it was just taken for granted that we have the opportunity, even though it's in a very segregated part of the country, we much would have rather been in a New York or Chicago area. But since it was Tuskegee, that was an opportunity to at least prove to ourselves and to the world at large, in this country in particular, that blacks can fly. So we, we accepted that condition of being segregated, but we also adopted as our mantra, we dare not fail. We dared not fail, we didn't. Mm -hmm. So that's where that came from.